Kelly and GNN News of the Week. The only news this week is that on Monday, September 5th, it's Labor Day weekend, so there's no school. Hi, I'm Jasmine Faulkner, and this is GNN's First Relationship Advice of the Year. I am taking it over for Maddie. This is Maddie. She's going to the Oaks this year, and she was no longer able to continue GNN. So today I have my sister, who's a new member of GNN, who needs some relationship advice. Okay, so what's your name? My name is Jayla Faulkner, and my problem that I need advice with is I really like this guy, you know, and he's like, he's pretty cute and he's really nice. And I think we could have a great life together, and I think he likes me, but I don't know. But like, I don't know what to do because a lot of people like him, but my reasons are better because, you know, like, we, we vibe really well. Okay, so it seems like this dude is like an attractive dude that everybody wants to go for me. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, but he's mine. Okay. <laughs> so, so, my advice to you is say hi first. Start with a hi, make a small talk. Um, you know, just kind of communicate more. Just say hi before. Okay. And make like silly faces. Okay, well continue doing that. And also, I think you should really just like talk more, get to know each other more. Yeah. Maybe yeah. exchange phone numbers. Yeah. And go from there. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. This has been Relationship Advice with the Falkman Sister. Bye. I'm Jasmine. And I'm Jayla. Hi, this is Aubrey Wilson with your GNN Sports. Today we have boys varsity football. Tomorrow we have girls junior varsity volleyball, boys junior varsity football, and girls varsity volleyball. Tuesday we have girls varsity tennis, co-ed varsity cross country, girls junior varsity volleyball, girls junior varsity soccer, girls varsity volleyball, boys varsity soccer. All that is on Tuesday. Thursday we have girls varsity golf, girls varsity, girls freshman volleyball, girls varsity tennis, girls junior varsity soccer, boys varsity soccer, and girls varsity soccer. I'm Aubrey Olson, this will be a new GNN. Hi GNN, this is your new segment, GNN Movie Minutes, with your host, Vivian Slegel. Girls and ghouls. We are starting a new segment that is my segment because I am the best host ever. Where I'm going to have someone super cool that is marginally as cool as I am come in <laughs> and talk about their favorite movie or TV show. It can be people outside of GNN, it will be people in GNN, maybe we'll even have like a teacher or something at some point. But it is my brand new segment where we'll talk about all the things and all the media. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Cora Gaddis, I'm in GNN. Really. The movie coming under review today is Dark Knight from the uh, Dark Knight movie trilogy um, with the famous Christian Bale Batman and Heath Ledger Joker. It is commonly regarded as the best in the series. In the city of Gotham, Batman, played by Christian Bale, has been keeping up on crime with the help of D.A. Harvey Dent and Jim Gordon till Heath Ledger's Joker jumps onto the scene and now he uh, toes the line between being a hero and being a vigilante. Yeah. Alright, Cora, would you like to tell what you like about um, Dark Knight? Yes! I love The Dark Knight because it's a really well-executed story that explores not only the character of Batman, but also the characters of the Joker and a Harvey Dent. Um, it also plays with the theme of good versus evil. The music is incredible, the performance of Heath Ledger is unlike anything else you've ever seen, and uh, it keeps you on the edge of your seat the entire time you're watching. And uh, are you a comic book fan, Cora? Yeah, I'm not like an avid reader, but I, I do enjoy my comic book. She's experienced. She knows the different sides of Batman, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, would you like to tell me um, some of the things that you dislike about the film? Sure. Many of the stunts are extremely cool and well done, but the Dark Knight trilogy <laughs> has always had an issue with portraying fight scenes. Uh, they're hard to understand, they're very confusing looking oh, and way they're shot. Like kind of anime-ish, where they're like everywhere? Well, it's just, yeah, it cuts in between, like, constantly, you cannot tell what the world is happening. Um, but there's a lot more, like, stunts instead of fight scenes in this movie compared to the first one, so it's actually probably better in that regard, but it's always been a problem. The other grip I have is that the growl in Batman's voice gets progressively worse as the trilogy <laughs> goes on. 
and it can be very distracting. Um, the portrayal of Bruce Wayne is very enjoyable, very well done, but Batman can be annoying sometimes. His like descent into madness comes with like the more struggling voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's bad. If you would recommend it, and who you would recommend it to? I definitely recommend it. Um, it's it's a really good experience. That might just be nostalgia talking, but like I've never forgotten this film. Uh, it's it's one of my favorite films ever. It, it's definitely up there on my top three. Um, I'd, I'd recommend this to not only people who love comics and like action movies and superheroes, but also people who love just good filmmaking and good writing. It's, it's just really well done in a lot of aspects, almost all of them. I heard it has some like wonderful like, cinematography. Oh yeah, yeah, it's beautiful at times. And then would you say you have to watch the first movie to understand the second movie, or is it standalone? Um, it's it's mostly a standalone. You could probably understand it completely fine. Uh, the first movie really doesn't have too much of an impact on the second movie, actually. It's, yeah, you could probably watch it. Alright, incredible. Pick the best movie out of the bunch, none of the other ones. Um, thank you so much for being here, Corey. Do you have anything you'd like to add before we go? It's a great movie. Good, I'm so glad you think so. Thank you for being here on our, uh, our first episode of GNN Movie Minutes. With Vivian Cycle and my permanent editor, Corgans. I'm honored to be here. about gray squirrels. Gray squirrels live in forests that have diverse and available nut trees. However, they are able to adapt to urban areas and can have dense populations even in cities. Nuts and seeds make up most of their diet, um, but they will also eat flowers, fungi, insects, and even bird eggs. And in addition to being a great food source for many predator species, gray squirrels tremendously help to spread seeds and nuts. The squirrels not only do so by eating the seeds and nuts, but also by burying um, them in preparation for winter. Uh, they bury more food than they can eat, so the remaining seeds and nuts sprout in the spring. Gray squirrels may take shelter in leaf nests called drays and in tree dens. Drays are found in tree branches and are built by the squirrel out of twigs, leaves, grasses, and sometimes cloth. Tree dens are more stable and protected than drays, and are particularly helpful during winter months because they are effective at keeping cold air out of the den. Gray squirrels have an excellent sense of smell and communicate with each other through sounds and body movement. When predators such as foxes or hawks are nearby, squirrels will call out to warn other squirrels of the danger. And while gray squirrels can cause diseases and such, it's no reason to have them tortured and abused like they have been for many years. Squirrel killing methods are extremely cruel and include poisoning, trapping, shooting, and in case of a smaller animal, stamping. Poisoned animals will die slowly and painfully and the chemicals can cause harm to animals nearby. An incident happened where there was a squirrel shot with a pellet gun, which is illegal in the city's limits. The perpetrator then struck this live squirrel, who was a nursing mother with a shovel, and left her in pain in public view. Here's some organizations that go to helping gray squirrels. The organizations are Humane Society of the United States, Animal Wildlife, and Stop Calling Gray Squirrels. And it is a Facebook group that you can donate to. It's very straightforward. This has been Curious Creatures with Cora Gattis and Bella Gay. Thanks for listening. Go Zoom! What's up guys, I'm Brenna Ashley and I'm hitting you with the first book of the week of the year. I made a sound. That poor book has been through so much. Three years. Hashtag save the book. Got Mar behind the camera, Mar say hi. Ayo! Ayo!
Now this summer, I didn't read as many books as I would have liked. I guess I got into a little bit of a slump. But the books that I did read were very enjoyable. So let's get into my top three books of the summer. Wow. First up, we have Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. I mentioned that I wanted to read this book last year, actually. My next book is Moxie by Jennifer Matthew. I have seen the movie on Netflix two times. It is a very good movie, but I have not read the book. I know, such a shame. I read it while I was on vacation. It's about a girl named Viv Carter who desperately wants to make a change to the sexism and harassment going on in her school. She goes under the alias Moxie and creates an anonymous feminist zine that's a mouthful, that she places in the girls' bathrooms. I highly recommend this book and the Netflix movie starring Hadley Robinson as Vivian. What's a zine? Next, we have Happily Ever After by Kiara Cass. This book is a companion to the selection series, which I reviewed last year. The book consists of four novellas, bonus scenes, illustrations, an exclusive epilogue to The One, and much more. This is a very fast-paced read and I finished it pretty quickly, but and the more I read, the more questions it answered. If you read the selection series and you want more, you'd really enjoy this book. And lastly, we have the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman. It's about two boys named Nick and Charlie who meet and realize they both have a crush on each other. Nick plays rugby and Charlie is a drum playing band geek. I watched the series on Netflix, loved it, and found out about this graphic novel series. I devoured those books. The art style is adorable and the story even more so. So if you're looking for a quick coming of age romance, this series is the way to go. And those were the books I read over the summer. You should be able to find these in our school library, so be able to check them out. I'm sure there's somebody watching who will enjoy these books as much as I do. Anyway, see you guys next week and have a great weekend.